coming up next, SPNN takes us back to 1999 with their series, Quarter Notes, Jazz from the Artist's Quarter. In this episode, Irv Williams. Irv Williams, Mr. Jazz, really, in the Twin Cities, also known as Mr. Smooth uh, for his wonderful sound and his beautiful phrasing. Uh, you can't talk about jazz in the Twin Cities in the last half century uh, without mentioning Irv Williams, who's probably the most popular and most familiar figure on the Twin Cities jazz scene. Last year, uh, Arts Midwest named Irv a jazz master. And uh, those of us who have been listening to him for many years, uh, we're glad to hear that, glad that Irv had received that kind of recognition. But actually, it was only an affirmation of what we've always felt, that he is a master. Not only a master musician, but a wonderful person with a warm, generous spirit uh, that comes through in his playing, as does his joy of playing, uh, which is contagious, infectious with the audience. Uh, Irv Williams, uh, Mr. Mr. Jazz, 79 years old, still going strong, playing beautifully, and enjoying it probably just as much as he did when he was a kid.
I started out um, playing the fiddle when I was uh, five years old. And my sister and I used to um, uh, go from, we were doing, we were church, we were doing church gigs. And my sister was a year older than I was, so we used to, she played the piano and I played the fiddle. And we used to do little concerts, a couple of tunes, you know, and people would clap. They thought it was just the greatest stuff they heard, and I was just the cutest little guy in the world. Of course, I started growing, and um, I wasn't so cute any longer, and they started listening to the fiddle, and that was the end of my gig on the fiddle. They decided, gee whiz, that kid just sounds awful. You know, get him off the stage. <laughs> and then I started playing the the, um, the clarinet at age um, about 12. And um, I had had uh, a bad case of bronchitis. And my dad had decided that um, possibly I should um, uh, get an instrument, a wind instrument, to strengthen my lungs, so he bought me a clarinet. And uh, I never would go out to pick it up, and so finally he threatened me. He says, you go out and get that clarinet or else. So I didn't like the sound, uh, the, the sound of the or else, so I went out and picked it up and brought it back home and started playing, and I really decided that I liked it. And I was playing, and the neighborhood was getting upset and everything, and a dad finally came up and says, son, don't you think you should let your lungs rest for a while? You know, you're doing real good and everything, and why don't you just uh, put it down for a while? I said, no way, dad. You got me into this. I'm going to play this thing. I'm going to play it good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
When listening to Irv, I think one of the things that uh, any listener will notice almost immediately is his sound. And as many of you know who have listened to jazz over the years and read about it, uh, that's the one thing musicians strive for, is their own personal sound. And Irv's definitely is. I mean, you can hear uh, something of the history of the tenor saxophone in his playing. I mean, he's been playing so long, listened to so many other players, and just naturally, I think, has incorporated uh, some of what he's heard from many players, Coleman Hawkins, Ben Webster, Lester Young, and uh, even more modernists like uh, Sonny Rollins, probably. So you get a history lesson in jazz tenor saxophone when you listen to Herb Williams. My daughter, Laura, a tune entitled Laura. Somebody asked me, I, I recorded this tune on one of my CDs, I can't remember which one, uh, asked me um, to play this number and I played it. And they came up and said, well, it wasn't like the record. Can't play it like the record. <laughs> I could listen to it and try to memorize it, but you know, it was off the cuff, so that's all this stuff is. Thank you. 
I, I usually, when I go into um, a club to play, I don't make any plans, and a lot of times that has been to my detriment. <laughs> but that's the way I operate, and I, I find that I'm, I'm fresher, everything, and it's just impossible for any jazz musician that I know that's worth his salt to play the same number the same way because we're improvising, and we're doing the stuff that comes um, uh, from out of our hearts and our heads, and it's just impossible for us to do the same number twice.
Another thing that distinguishes Irv, as it does many other jazz players, is the relaxed way uh, in which he plays, the effortless way. Uh, with some musicians, uh, they look like it's hard work, like they're putting in an eight-hour day on one tune, you know. Uh, with Irv, no such thing. He has such an easy, uh, unforced style, and uh, it has nothing to do with his age uh, or the fact that he's often seated. It's just the way he approaches the music. I think it's his personality. And with great musicians, as with any kind of artist, uh, the best are the ones whose personalities come through in their playing or whatever else they're doing.
of people have asked me through the years why we make faces. And my answer always been, it's such hard work. And we we're trying to think uh, what to play next and everything. We all have our little uh, ways of express, expressing us, ourselves. And um, um, it's very interesting to watch all of us, I do, uh, when we're really getting into the music and really uh, um, trying to um, uh, think of things to play. And uh, uh, so when you come out to a jazz club, watch the musicians and watch their facial expressions and listen to the music and, and you'll find that uh, everything they play coincides with, with, uh, with uh, their actions, their physical actions and so forth. I know a lady came up to me once and she says, um, uh, how can you play and your, um, your feet are out of rhythm? Uh, I said, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I said, my feet out of rhythm? I said, well, I'm not going to change that later. I said, because something must be going on pretty good, so I'm not about to change that, so I'm just going to have my feet out of rhythm <laughs> the rest of my life.
I just want to uh, uh, thank uh, the public, uh, jazz lovers, and maybe jazz haters too. But I just want to thank everybody in the Twin Cities for making life so wonderful for me, you know. And uh, uh, I'm hopefully I can hang around for a few more years yet. This next number um, I first heard in uh, 1936. Um, it was played by a gentleman who had been in Paris for quite a few years after uh, making a name for himself here in the States. His name was Coleman Hawkins. 
and he um, made a classic recording of Body and Soul. And everybody was playing this tune all over the world. And they're playing his two choruses that he did on them. And Downbeat wrote out the whole two choruses. And I spent about a year trying to learn the two choruses. Finally, I just gave up on it. And I said, well, I might as well do it the way I think I should do it. And so that's why I've been doing it. I think I played this tune about, I've um, been playing over 60 years. So I've probably been doing this tune, I've done this tune probably um, 25,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get paid for it most of the time. So here's Biden. So. Thank you. 
The gentleman you're listening to, Michael Ronstead on piano. <laughs> Jim Verma on bass. <laughs> Kenny Horace on drums. My name's Irv Williams. 